Amen. I'm going to be reading the Amplified Version this morning. Amen. So it's going to have some additional insight from the King James Version. Amen. 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 Romans chapter 8, verse 28 through 31. And if you're there, say amen. 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 Say everyone will stand as we read the Lord's holy divine word. Amen. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. We are assured and know that God being a partner in their labor, all things work together and are fitting into a plan for good to and for those who love God and are called according to His design and purpose. For those whom He foreknew, of whom He was aware and loved beforehand, He also destined from the beginning for ordaining them to be molded into the image of His Son and share inwardly His likeness that he might become the firstborn among many brethren. And those whom he thus far ordained, he also called. And those whom he called, he also justified, acquitted, made righteous, putting into right standing with himself. And those whom he justified, he also glorified, raising them to a heavenly dignity and condition or state of being. What then shall we say to all this? If God is for us, who can be against us? Who can be our foe if God is on our side? Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. This morning we want to speak to you from the subject. God's pre-plan for His pre-people. God's pre-plan for his free people. Yeah. It's wonderful how God will speak to us in his word and just remind us that the world may try to put us down, but his word always picks us up. Yes, he does. And wonderful thing about this is he lets us know. That no matter what is going on in our lives, no matter what the situation may be, Amen. those things that we think <laughs> have come to tear us down, to bring us up, That's right. and to lay us out. God has said in this word here, he said, all things work together right. for the good of those who love him Amen. and who are called according to his purpose. Joseph placed it this way and he stated it this way after his brothers had thrown him into a pit sold him into slavery and went back and told their father that a beast had destroyed their brother uh, he could have been bitter he could have been hateful but in the midst of it all when he saw his brothers again he had the power to have them destroyed he had the power to have them arrested he had the power to have them killed uh, but what did he say? He said, what well, you meant for bad, God meant for good. That's right. And so we have to understand a lot of times that the devil tries to make us believe that we are an afterthought and that God is an afterthought. That nothing that God has done was done with us in mind. He always tries to make it seem as though we are pawns in God's game. But it's the other way around. The devil only wants to use us as a pawn in his game. And the game is this. He wants to upset God. And he knows one way to get to God is to mess with his children. He knows that God has already said it'd be better that you put a millstone around your neck than you mess with one of my little ones. And so God wants us to know that none of us are an afterthought. And sometimes people will say that. They'll say that to their kids, they'll say that to their spouses, they'll tell it to their friends. You're an afterthought. Uh, you're the last thing on my mind. But here God lets us know that we are part of His plan. Amen. And in His plan, we were in His design. And so we look at this, we talk about this 
pre-planned and pre-people. The first thing we want to do is focus on the meaning of pre, pre-planned, and pre-people. Three things, pre, pre-planned, and pre-people. Now pre is simply this, it's a prefix, and it simply means this, it means prior to, it means in advance of, it means early, it means beforehand, it means in front of. Uh, we, when we, we hear that sometimes, some terms that we are familiar with, that use that term pre or pre-approved. Everybody say, I got a pre-approved card in the mail. They don't even know who you are. You didn't even fill out an application. But they've checked your credit record. That's right. You notice, they've accessed your credit record yeah. to see how you manage your bills, how you take care of your, your situation and everything in your house, in your life. Yeah. Based upon that report that they've done on you, they decide to send you a card pre-approved yeah. with a credit line on it. Yeah, sure. You didn't ask for it. Yeah. You didn't send for it. But because, thank you Holy Ghost, they've looked over your record yeah. and seen what your record says about you as being an upstanding good person, they have pre-approved your card. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. There's also something that we call preschool. Before a child gets ready to go into the first grade, they send them to preschool. They, they, they talk about kindergarten, but it's a preparation before they go to elementary school. Amen. It's also preset. A lot of times they say they'll give you your watch when you go and buy a watch. It used to be you had to wind it up and set it. But now what do they do? All those watches have already been wound and preset. All you have to do is check to see if the time is right. There's also something that they call prenatal. Before all of us were born, the doctors made sure there was care for us, and our mothers had to go to the doctor to make sure that everything was going to be all right before we came to this world. You notice that? Make sure that everything was going to be all right before we came to this world. Think about this. God pre-planned because everything that we needed, He put here even before He created us. Amen. So that lets us know he thought about us before he made us. Oh, yeah. That's right. He gave us everything that he made. He put the sun, the moon, the sky, the stars, the trees, even the birds to give us music. Oh, yeah. All of these things he did as part of his pre-plan before he pre-created us. Amen. Pre-plan simply means this. It's a method of acting of doing, of proceeding, of making, of developing in advance. Uh, when you hear the president saying, well, before we do anything, we need to make sure we have a strategy. In other words, he said, before we walk into a country like we did some years ago, we need to have a pre-plan. Pre-plan means, battle plan means, we go in not just thinking we're going to go in and run everybody over, but we need to be ready just in case they're ready for us. Amen. It also means this. It's a specific project or definite purpose, such as a plan for the future. Yes, sir. One of the things they try to teach children, they say, what are you going to be in the future? That's one of the first things people ask, what do you want to be when you grow up? Amen. That's a pre-plan of who you're going to be and what you want to do. Amen. Also notice this. It's a design or a scheme of or an arrangement. That means something like this. There's an elaborate plan for seating guests. Every wedding, even at funerals, there's a preset design. There's a place for the minister to go. There's a place for the bride and groom to stand. There's a place for the groom in the stand. There's a place for the maids and the maid of honor. The maid don't stand in front of the maid of honor. The best man next to the groomsman. There's even a place for the reserved seat. And now they say, family of the bride, family of the groom. All these things are pre-planned. Even at funerals, a young man made that statement. There's always a reserved seat for those people who suffer bereavement because of a family member. Yeah. They don't sit in the back. They don't sit on the side. 
They always have a reserved seat for them up front. Even the pallbearers have a special place where they have to sit for a funeral. All of these things are pre-planned before time. Pre-planned is a formal program for specific and specified benefits and needs. In other words, a pension plan. Everybody, once they get a job, and it's hard to think about today, but everybody pre-planned for when they retire. What are they going to do after they work for 40 years? We don't find many people working at one place for 40 years. Matter of fact, the government's trying to pre-plan right now where you won't just work for 40, you'll work forever. You'll work until you die. And you're going to pay until you die. All of these things are pre-planned that they have set in place. Now what are, and who are free people? Free people are people who are those who pick Jesus Amen. to partner prior to passing away. Yeah. That's why the old folks used to always say this, baby, out of everything you do in life, you need to know Jesus. Oh, yeah. If you don't know him, you need to get to know him. Yeah. Some of them say you're going to need him in a dying hour, but you need him before the dying hour. Oh, yeah. You need him every day to have this walk that you walk in. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, these people, the pre-people, are those who know in advance of any adversity, that Jesus is their answer. No matter what the situation is, no folks always knew this. They said they weren't educated, but they had enough sense to know when everything was going wrong, turn to Jesus. When you needed help, look to Jesus. When you had a problem, look to Jesus. Even before you had a problem, if you had food on your table, say grace, look to Jesus. I was telling Sister Young last week, I, I looked out the window, and even the animals have enough sense to know to look to the law. Yeah, a squirrel was in the yard. And you know how squirrels are. They like to go and get their acorns and get them out the grass. And you can tell because they'll get them and they'll pick them up and they'll eat them. And a lot of times they'll sit down and eat or they'll stand up. But you always see their hands moving. Yeah. I said, Sister Young, get what I just saw. Squirrel standing in the yard. Saying grace to the law. Amen. You know how that squirrel was looking? He wasn't looking straight ahead. He was looking like this with his hands like this, looking straight up. Yeah. Just like this with his eyes straight up, not, not bad, not moving. Yeah. She said, you need to take a picture. I said, if I go back, he probably going to be gone. And when I turned back, he wasn't in this position no more. Yeah. He had gotten his acorns and he was eating his food. Yeah. If a squirrel got enough sense. Yeah. <laughs> to realize to say grace to the Lord for what he's given to him we ought to have enough sense to say thank you Lord for what you've done thank you. free people know to keep Jesus in front of them and not follow them. a lot of times they want to make God and Jesus always well you come when I need you no I want you in front of me because if he's in front of you, you don't have to worry about anything when the time comes. You won't have to look back saying, Lord, where are you? Oh, yeah. You can stand and say, Lord, I ain't worried about nothing because I see you in front of me. Yeah. Amen. I always remember pastor told me this when we first started preaching. He said, keep Jesus in front of you. Oh, yeah. Look to him. Yeah. Keep him in front of you. No matter what you do, look to him. Yeah. Why do you know it's important? As long as Jesus was when he was walking on the wall, as long as Peter saw Jesus in front of him, everything was all right. When when Jesus was walking with Peter and said, come to me, Peter looked at Jesus in front of him, and he walked to Jesus. When he stopped looking in front and looked down, you know what happened? He went down. Stop looking in front and look down. He went down. But as long as Jesus is in front, you don't have to worry about all of those situations and circumstances. Where you, what about behind me? You ain't got to look behind. Because like the old folks say, he's too wide for anybody to get around. You ain't got to worry about your back because God said, I got your back. In our text, Apostle Paul reveals details about God's pre-plan for his pre-people. First thing Paul reveals that God's pre-plan is an assured plan. Yes, it is. Now, now, now notice I didn't say an insured plan. I said an assured plan. 
Assured in this context means faithful. Yes, sir. It means trustful. Yes. It means believing and it Amen. means sure. Amen. That's why the songwriter said, Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste yes. of glory divine. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Look in verse 28. It indicates that we are faithful and trustful and believing and sure and know that God being a partner in this, we're not in this thing by ourselves. Yes. No, no. The devil will always come to you and tell you you're by yourself. Yes. The minute something bad goes on, look, God left you by yourself. God is in the battle with us. He's a partner with us. And notice what it says. All things work together and are fitting into His plan. Notice, God has a plan. We may not understand it, but God understands it. Say it is a plan for good. But notice it for two and those who love God and who are called, called according to His design and purpose. Not our design and purpose, but His. Amen. Second thing Paul indicates is that God's people are free people. How do we know that? It says they are pre-known, predestinated, yes. and pre-molded. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. You are pre-known, predestinated, and pre-molded. We know God's people are pre-known because in verse 29, Paul said, For whom he did foreknow. The term foreknow in this text means to foresee and to know beforehand. Remember what he told Jeremiah? He said, Before you were born, while you were in your mother's womb, I knew you. And I knew you were going to be a prophet to the nations. Amen. We know that God's people are predestinated because Paul also stated in verse 29, he said, He also did predestinate. Predestinate in this context means to limit in advance. It means determine before and it means ordain. Now some people are lying and say this. Now they'll they'll, 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 they'll make people confused. Some people mean predestinate and say, well, God has already picked out who's going to die, who's going to go to heaven, and who's going to go to hell. So no matter what you do, it don't make no difference. You already been picked out to go to hell. That's not what predestined means. Predestined means those who meet and fall into the plan, no matter who you are, you go to heaven. Predestined means those who are unbelieving, unaccepting, uncaring about the things of God, they go to hell. Simple as that. Simple as that. But notice this. We know that God's people are pre-molded. Because in the last portion of verse 29, Paul says to be conformed to the image of his son. Thank you, Jesus. That he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Notice, conform to the image of his son. Hmm? Amen. So that we might be the firstborn among many brethren. Conformed in this text means fashion to light. Or to the same pattern. Notice what it means. Fashion like and form to the same pattern. Yes. Notice the pre-molded portion of God's pre-plan is confirmed by this in Genesis 1.26. Remember what the Bible said? And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. Amen. So when you look at yourself, you look at your inner being and who you are. Amen. God said that you are pre-molded. Yes, sir. Every one of us are made in God's image. Amen. And so if He pre-molded us, remember what He did? He said, I'm going to send myself down. But I'm going to send myself down in a man's body. Amen. So God pre-molded the body that will be sent down in the form of Jesus. And so if He pre-molded us, pre-molded Adam and Eve, pre-molded Jesus, we pre-molded beings. And the form that He put us in is in the form and the matter and the likeness of Him. What does God say? I have hands. I have eyes. I have nose. God says I can walk. I can talk. I can move around. I can do all these things. We can do all those things. We got eyes we can see. Ears we can hear. Mouth we can talk. Feet that we can walk with. Hands we can work with. A mind that we can think with. All of these things God gave to us. Thank you, Jesus. Third thing. Paul lets us know. The 
that God's free people go through a process of elevation. You notice know this? I didn't say a process of elimination. I said a process of elevation. When, whenever you get ready to go get a job, or whenever, even on the basketball court, remember that brother Steve? When you used to go on the basketball court to go play basketball, whether it was at the ball or at the high school, for recess, everybody would walk to the court. And at the court, people would choose who would be on that team. That was a process of elimination. Because somebody would pick the team and somebody would whisper in the ear, oh, don't get bro Steve. Oh, get, 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 get Dave, get Dave on, Dave on our team. And then the other person will, who you, uh, uh, maybe you can get, bro, bro, uh, get Rev Turk, but Rev Turk, he ain't played basketball. I don't know you. Maybe he can stand there and be a defender. Yeah. All that's a process yeah. of elimination. Oh, yeah. And you always notice there's one or two people that left over that nobody wants to pick. I know. I know. So they don't even decide that they want to pick them because I don't want them. Well, I don't want them either. <laughs> well, I tell you what, let's flip for it. You notice? Let's flip for it. But the thing is, the way God will do that thing, the ones that they don't pick will be the very ones that take the winning shot. Yeah. The ones they don't pick be the very ones that get the last rebound. Yeah. The very ones they don't pick be the very ones that wind up doing something greater than anybody else on the team had done. Yeah. The one that they pick may say, he a ball hog, he don't pass to nobody. The only one they want to pick, he can't jump. But God has said it. Yeah. Well, the one that they don't want will be the one that'll turn around being the one that says, I wish I had picked him before I picked you. Yeah. That's the way that thing works. God says he'll take the weak things of the world and yeah. confound and make fools of the, of, the, of the wise people of the world. Yeah. That's what God does. And that's why they can understand a lot of times why things turn out different from the way they plan. Yeah. Notice? Different from the way they plan. Because God said in His Word, He said, Man plans, but I direct. Man plans, but I direct. Who the person on the set that makes the movie go the way it's supposed to go? It's not the actors. It's not that. It's not Denzel. You know what Denzel does? Denzel might read a script. But Denzel takes his orders from the director. If Denzel not doing what the director wants done, the director says cut. Yeah. Yeah. We may play in one thing and say we're going in one direction, but God said that's not the way I want you to go. Yeah. We may think we're gonna get there one way, but God said no, that's not the way I'm gonna send you. Yeah. Sometimes I'm gonna send you through something just to make sure that you have the the power. And the wherewithal, so when you get there, yeah. it's going to be sweeter for you. Yeah. Notice what he said with the children of Israel when he brought them out. Brought them out of Egypt. Yeah. was a three-day trip, but it took 40 years to get there. Wow. In the first place, he said the reason why he took them through the wilderness, he wanted to see if they were going to be faithful to him. Yeah. Before I sing into the promised land that I've already pre-picked, and preset for you. I gotta make sure you my free people. I gotta make sure you can have a heart for me. I gotta make sure you can have a mind for me. So in the midst of situation, if some something if the wind blow a little bit, you're not gonna turn around and go back. Amen. Free people don't turn around. Like they say, when the going gets tough, free people get going. When the wind blows, they just stand firm like my mama used to say. I stand firm. I used to lean against it and say, baby, you ain't gonna knock me down. Your mama stand firm. I say, mama, don't say that you're gonna stand firm. There's a possibility that a stronger wind could come and blow. But as long as you pre-plan, God has a foundation for you. Now notice this. In that process of elevation, the first step is to be called by God. Amen. Notice? Now a lot of times where preachers get called, no God, God sent out a call to everybody. The call was the same as John the Baptist said. Repent. The kingdom of heaven yeah. is at hand. Amen. Remember he said, when you hear the Lord's voice, we talked about Sunday, the, the, don't, don't be stiff neck today hear his voice yeah. and receive him and accept him. That's a call. Yeah. Yeah. We know this about that, that a call is this. 
Because he said this notice. And those whom he foreordained, he also called. Yeah. Amen. Call means to bid. It means to call forth. It also means surname. We have surnames, all of us. Know what Jesus did with the disciples? What did he call Peter? Simon. Called James and John, sons of thunder. All of those are surnames. God has given us surnames. You know what our surnames are? Righteous. Yeah. Christian. Yeah. Born again. Yeah. Believer. Yeah. When you have a surname, that means God has called you. Boy. Amen. When you're in Christ, He's called you. Yes. Yes. Remember what He did with Lazarus? He didn't just go to the grave and say, Get up. He said, Lazarus, come forth. Yeah. Amen. That's a call. And he has to call you by your name because if he has so much power, if he just says, get up. Hell <laughs> Remember when God said, let there be light. Yeah. Light showed up. Yeah. Let there be a sun, sun, moon, and star. If God just said, let there be, it's going to happen. Amen. So he has to designate by a name. Yeah. Right. Second step in, the, is, in this elevation process is you must be justified by God. Amen. We know this because in the middle portion of verse 30 it reads, And those whom he called, he also justified. Yeah. Amen. Justified means this, acquitted, made righteous. That's right. Putting them into right standing with himself. We can't be right in our own eyes and be wrong no, in God's no, eyes. No, no. You can be right as you want to be, but if you're not right with God, it means nothing. Amen. God already said in this word, he said, that was a day when man did what he thought was right in his own eyes. Amen. And when that day came later on, he called Noah and told Noah, you need to build an ark. Because I'm about to clean things up. Amen. The world is getting to that point now where everybody has their own truth, their own right. But you better be right with God and make sure that God justifies you. Amen. And not some ad on television. Yes. Not some paid broadcast. If they may pay to justify you. But if God says you're not justified, you're not justified. Amen. The third step is this. In the process of elevation, is to be glorified by God. Amen. Not by man, not by the news media, not by some strange group of people, but by God. Amen. We know this because the final portion of verse 30 says this, and those whom he justified... He also glorified. Amen. Glorified means raising them to a heavenly dignity and condition or state of being. Yes. Amen. In other words, what he said, he's going to exalt those who humble themselves. Amen. He's going to lift you up into a place. And what did he say? In heavenly places. Right. Not earthly places. Heavenly places. Amen. That's as high as you can get. Where God is at the top of the top. Yes. He elevates you to be in a place where he is. Amen. Fourth thing Paul lets us know. That God's pre-plan for His pre-people offers pre-support. Yeah. Amen. His plan offers pre-support. Support means provision. It means backing. It means confirmation. It means foundation. It means reinforcement. And it means maintenance. Yeah. There's no vehicle, no house, nobody that can't go without having maintenance done. My Lord. What do they do with cars now? They try to sell you a pre-maintenance plan. They might give you a three-year warranty and try to give you an extended warranty. Why? Because they know you're going to have to have some maintenance done. You have to have some maintenance done. As long as you're in this world, something's going to have to be done. You might have to go to the doctor, take some medicine, cut your hair, shave your beard, clip your toenails, whatever you have to do, some maintenance has to be done to your body. Amen. How do we know maintenance is done and God does it? What did Jeremiah say in Lamentations? His mercies are new. Yeah. Every morning. Great is thy faithful. He gives us a portion of what we need. Every day. He gives us a portion of what we need. Amen. Every day. He feeds us what we need. Yeah. Every day he nurtures us in a way that we need to be nurtured. Every day God gives to us Amen. what we need. Notice what it says in the Word. Notice what it says in the Word. Verse 31 offers a question and a quickening. He says this, What then 
shall we say to all this? If God is for us, <laughs> if God is for us, Thank who can be against us? In other words, who can be our foe if God is on our side? Oh, it don't matter who that foe is, as long as God is your friend, and a friend that sticks closer than a brother, oh, yes, you don't have to worry about your enemies. Yes. You don't have to worry about your problem because God is bigger than all of those things. Amen. And you have to remember, he said, greater in you. You have things that one that is greater in you than he that is in the world. Thank you, Jesus. God has placed himself in you. God has placed his Holy Spirit in you. His Holy Spirit is much greater than that old devil. Oh, yeah. That devil may want to talk big, but God is bigger than all. Amen. Devil may want to talk bad, but God has told us we have power to tell the devil, shut up. Yes. Y'all do know that, don't you? You have the power to tell the devil to shut up. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. But you don't use it. How do you know? Whenever the demons saw Jesus coming, oh Jesus, Son of God, yeah. why are you coming to torment us before our time? Right. Jesus just looked at him and said, Shut up. Shut up. Hold your peace. Yes. Yes. And once he said, Shut up, they did nothing. They said nothing. When he asked them what their name was, remember the man in the gallery said, What's your name? Yeah. My name Legion. Because we are many. And Jesus said, well, get out of him. Come out. Notice again, Carver, come out of him. Amen. But notice he's talking to him now. But Lord, we going to come out, but bid us to go into the swine. Amen. Send us somewhere, Lord. Yeah. Don't just call us out, but send us somewhere. Bible says that they went into the swine. But notice this. Now, I never thought about it. The swine had enough sense to understand that they didn't want to be possessed by demons. Amen. So the Bible says when the demons went into the swine, the swine ran over the cliff and drowned them. Yeah. Because they did not want to be possessed by demons. Yeah. You have the power to tell demons to step back. You have the power to tell the devil, shut up. Yeah. In the name of Jesus, be quiet. Yeah. And when you say that, he has to stop. Amen. But as long as you talk to him, he won't talk back. Amen. <laughs> Amen. I'll talk. As long as you talk to him, he gonna talk back. Yeah. He, oh, he good at talking. He's a silver tongue devil. Yeah, when vocabulary, Satan got a vocabulary. But you can tell him, shut up. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. He has to be quiet. When you call the name Jesus, what the Bible says, demons tremble. Yeah. Oh, not Jesus. Shut up in the name of Jesus. Uh, so as we close, we want to leave you with these final tidbits of information about God's plea plan for his pre people. First thing we want you to understand when you're one of God's pre people, you are included in God's preferred plan. That means you are included in the chosen generation, the raw priesthood, the holy nation. You are one of the peculiar people that show forth the praises of him who have called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Thank you, Jesus. When you are one of God's free people, you are included in God's present plan. Amen. That means you are included with those who heed Romans 12 and 1, which cry this one into his presential bodies. Thank you, Lord. A living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. When you're one of God's plea people, you're included in God's preserved plan. That means you're included with those who proclaim the Lord is my hiding place. He shall preserve me from trouble. He shall cover me about with songs of deliverance. Say, Lord, when trouble comes and you're a free person, God got you. Amen. When this is coming, you're a free person, God's got you. Yeah. When lies come, and you're a free person, God's got you. Yeah. When the heat and the fire comes, and you're a free person, God got you. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were free people. Yeah. What did God do? He preconditioned the situation with them. And then when he went in, he made it look like, or the king wanted to make it look like then it was worse than what it was going to be. Why did you say it was worse? Because look what he told him. I'm going to eat it seven times high. Just for you to make it seven times high. But seven is a divine number of God. He was just completing the process. And said when they walked in, what happened? The ropes that were binding them fell off. Everything that was binding them 
fell off. Yeah. They stood up and walked around because they had been preconditioned yeah. to walk in the fire and furnace. Didn't just stand up, didn't, but walked around yeah. in the flame. Hallelujah. Looked around in the furnace. Yeah. Saying like, this all he got? Yeah. This ain't as hot as I thought it was going to be. Yeah. He talking about how hot it been. But notice what else happened. God had already pre-reserved the condition. Amen. When the three got thrown in, the Bible said, the king said, didn't we throw in three? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yes, we threw in three, but look, I see four. Oh, yeah. Yeah. God had already pre-reserved that he was going to be in the fire with him because he had already said it out there, I'll be with you through the fire. Oh, yeah. I'll go with you through the flood. Don't worry. When those things come, I'll be right there with you. Remember what we said? He said, I'm a partner in this thing with you. What did Daniel say? Well, they lied on me. Try to throw me in the lion's den. Oh, yeah. But didn't realize God had already had a free conversation with the lion. Yeah. When they throw in Daniel, you're not going to eat him. You're not going to paw him. You're going to become his pillow. Oh, yeah. You're going to become his resting place. All you're going to do is purr like little kittens. You're going to let him lay down in your chest. Woo! Thank you, Holy Ghost. Yeah. He's going to rest better than he ever rest. Oh, yeah. You're going to get up in the morning. Yeah. The king will call you more. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Could your God say, oh, yeah. Live long, old king. Yeah. My God has delivered me. Oh, yeah. When you are a free person, God will take care of you. Oh, yeah. When you're a free person and you're free people, you're included in God's prevail plan. Yeah. That means you are included with those unto whom God has said, They shall fight against you, but they shall not prevail against you. Yeah. For I am with you to deliver you. In every situation, God said, don't worry, baby. I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. You are more than a conqueror when you're a free person. Not only will you conquer, but you will exalt and you will advance. There's a difference with just conquering. You can conquer something. But when you can exalt and advance, that means you're more than a conqueror. When you are one of God's free people, you are included in God's prevent plan. I like this one. Huh? That means you're included with those people unto whom God's word declare no weapon formed against you yeah. shall prosper. Amen. And every tongue, we will get this point, and every tongue that shall rise against you in judgment, you shall condemn. Notice, every tongue that rises in the condition against you, you will condemn them. Amen. Notice, God says, they try to do you in. They going to get done in. God, remember he said, they curse you. I'm going to bless you. God said, they bless you. I'm going to bless you some more. That's the way God works on a pre-plan. And finally, when you're one of God's pre-people, you're included in God's pre-pad plan. Uh, This is that plan that Deacon talks about. This is that plan that my mama knew about. This is the plan that Jesus said in my father's house. A many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, notice what he said, I will come again and receive you unto myself that where I am, there you may be also. What did he say? Heaven is a prepared for prepared people. Huh? Heaven is a prepared place yes, for prepared people. Yes. So because you're a part of God's pre-plan nice. and you're a pre-person, God has already placed a pre-mansion and a pre-home. Yeah. Thank you, Holy Ghost. When you look at it, you know what that is? A lot of people used to put this down. Yeah. But our mansion is a pre-manufactured home. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Not, I don't want no pre-manufactured home. I want something I built the ground up. Pre-manufactured had been built from the ground up. The only thing is, it's already been built. All you have to do is go in and pick out the one you want. Once you pick it out, notice what they'll do. They'll even load it up and bring it to where you want it to be. They'll park it on the lot you want to park it on. They'll put it exactly in the place, in the direction where you want it to be. God has already set for the pre-manufactured home. I don't think nobody's going to go to heaven and 
said, Lord, I don't like the view. I think I want to be on the right side. Have a look over the water and see the river running with pure gold. Uh, Lord, I think I wanted to be on the side where the, I could see the people crossing the Jordan River. Lord, I think I want to be on the side where, where John was. When he saw that number where no man could number. Lord, I want a special place. I don't think nobody going to say anything about this pre-manufactured home. Nobody going to say anything about this pre-structured home. Nobody going to say anything about this pre-furnished home. All they going to say is glory to God. Yeah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I made it. Thank you. Lord, I made it. Thank you. I'm home. I'm at home. Thank you, Thank you Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus, for making a free plan and making me one of your free people. Yeah. That's all you got to worry about. When the devil try to mess with you, you just mad. Yeah. Because I'm one of the free people. Yeah. And you a post devil. You going to go to hell. And all the people that are post, that mean after, they got an after place. Yeah. An after life in hell. In hell. That's where they go. Yeah. But when you're a pre-person, God says this. You rest. And the Lord kept saying this in my spirit this morning. You rest in Him and with Him. Yeah. Remember what it said when Lazarus died and the rich man died? It said, Lord, the Lord sent an angel, a prepared angel, to bring him. And he rested in the bosom of Abraham. Amen. But the man that was rich went to a place yeah, where they were weeping and gnashing teeth. Yeah. But understand this. Heaven is a prepared place yes, for prepared people. Yes. Hell was prepared for the devil and his demons. Amen. But if you decide to run with him, That's right. you'll be with him. Right where he is. Yeah. And so, remember, you're included in God's pre-plan. Amen. And because you're in the pre-plan, that means you're one of the pre-people. Yes. And if you're one of the pre-people, God created you. He molded you. Remember? But he did this. He breathed his breath into you. Uh, that yes. means he thought about you yeah. beforehand. Yeah. Not only does he think about you beforehand, He's thinking about you right now. And the thing about it now, he's already thinking about what he wants to do for you yeah. in the future. That's right. He said, you've been predestined. He said, I called you, I justified you, that's right. but then I'm going to glorify you. That's and see, that's the thing. Jesus went back to glory. Be glorified. Right. But Revelation says, with all of the saints, yeah. all of the children of God, yeah. get up to glory. Yeah. We all gonna stand up yeah. and give glory Hallelujah. to God. Yeah. Give glory to Jesus, to the Lamb that was slain. Thank you, Lord. But He says this: these old rusty bodies, oh, no. these old tore up bodies. Yeah. You know what He says is gonna happen? He says you are gonna have a glorified yeah. body, yeah. Amen. glorified body. No pain, no suffering. No tears, but just joy and peace. And those glorified bodies going to be so bright that you won't need the sun, you won't need the stars, you won't need the moon, because you're going to have lights in the presence of the main light. We have lights in the presence of God, lights in the presence of Jesus Christ, because he said, I am the light of life. I'm the morning star. Ain't nothing brighter than me. And all of those lights are going to light the city. Uh, and we're going to buy at home thank you. forever and ever thank you. and ever. Amen. You've been pre-planned. Oh, You're not the way after thought. Yes. God knew what he was doing. Amen. He made you the way he wants to make you. Thank Amen. you, Holy Ghost. He Amen. does the way he wants. And it may seem like sometimes Amen. things aren't going the way you plan. But just listen up for the direction of God. Yes. God directed it. So when He directs it, He's going to do more than win a Grammy, more than Academy Award. Yeah. It's going to be glorious. Yeah. <laughs> not magnificent, not stupendous, yeah. not superb, not mind boggling, but glorious. Yes, sir. Thank you, Jesus.